Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Gospel according to John chapter 3. Some very familiar verses which we just heard in the most traditional King James translation of Mark Barner. Put into a slightly more modern translation, but also put into the context in which those familiar Lord verses were spoken. Now, there was Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a member of the religious ruling council. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for none can perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with them. In reply, Jesus declared, Tell you the truth, no one can see the realm of God unless they are born again. How can a person be born when they're already old? Nicodemus asked. Surely no one can enter the second time into their mother's womb to be born. <coughs> Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the realm of God unless born of the water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You shall be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we've seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one's ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the child of all humanity. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the child of humanity must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in the child may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave the one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send God's child into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through that one. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
for changing his life and starting all over again. Now you've got to love this man. He's a man of his own denomination and proud of Thank you very much. Like Paul, he says, I'm a Pharisee and I'm okay. It's great. Member of the ruling council. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad you caught that. He, Nicodemus had his life together and he was no fool. He was not going to risk criticism, questioning, or ostracism by going to Jesus when everybody else is around. Now maybe he sat in the back of the synagogue during one of Jesus' teachings, or maybe he sort of stood around the crowd when Jesus was there in the streets teaching or healing. He says, I know you're from God. you got to be from God with all this great stuff you're doing. And Jesus went, great, all right. But Nicodemus meets him late at night because he'd really rather not risk what hanging around with this rabbi means. That would be like somebody calling me up and saying, Mary, I really got to talk to you. And I'd say, okay, you want me to come to your house? You want to come to the office? What do you want to do? Well, I'll come to you, but how about 2 o'clock this morning? Okay. Well, well everybody in the upper rooms is asleep, and there's no one else around the office, and I'm really rather not have anybody know I'm talking to you. Oh, uh, okay, two o'clock in the morning. Think of even shows up Jesus' office at two o'clock in the morning, and they have the kind of earnest talk that I think happens best in the wee hours. The staying up late at night and really trying to hash things out. And Nicodemus pressing Jesus and Jesus pushing Nicodemus and neither really giving in much to the other. Jesus says, you must be born again. You have to start all over again to really know what the realm of God is about. In my reading habits, I try, well, I try to do it. I vary what I read. Right now, I'm reading an interesting book called The Watchman's Rattle by Amane Costa. Interesting hard book. The kind of book that you have to stop and reread a paragraph to make sure you have it right. Oprah Winfrey once spoke to Toni Morrison, the marvelous author, whose books I love. And she said, your books are too hard. When, I, when I'm reading through them, I can't just go through it and turn it like a damn brown book, page after page after page. I really have to stop and pay attention to what you're saying in order to get it. And Tony Morrison at Marlesman says, that my you is what is called reading. <laughs> you know, it's not always easy, and so I, I get sort of a workbook that I have to work at reading, and then I'll choose, oh, science fiction, yes, or something lighter. And lately, I've been reading my old familiar favorite, the James Harriet books about <coughs> his time as a veterinarian on New York <coughs> before World War II and shortly after. Wonderful books. Funny books that you sit there and you laugh out loud, or once in a while you'll throw in a terribly sad one. And I find myself with tears running down my face going, oh, the fucking die. <laughs> well, reading James Harriet takes me back to my early ministry on the farms of northern Indiana and had a wonderful time. But one of the best times was the time James Harriet writes about lambing time, which is right now. It starts mid to late January in the bleakest time and continues for a month or two as one little lamb after another pops out. Well, James Harriet writes about, because he's a very graphic images, and one he talks about is about a prolapsed uterus, that sometimes a farmer will call him out for a lambing gone bad, or even for a cow who has calf, and the calf or the lamb has come out just fine, but has pulled with it, oh, the uterus of the mother. Very painful, and kind of nasty to read about. And so is the bed. He goes in there and he cleans it up and he shoves it back in. And there are some tricks to it that he shares with you. Should you ever need to shove a prolapsed uterus a large animal in itself. Except you and I probably would be able to suture it in just a couple of stitches with it in there to make sure it doesn't pop out again. The little lambs, I can almost envision them. Here it is the lousiest 
time of the year. And in the tall fells of Yorkshire, the wind whipping across the dales, bitter cold. And there they are, moist and warm in the only womb they've ever known. And then they are
though, especially the candlelight at the end, I, I usually stand over there and kind of look out, and the yellow warmth fills the sanctuary, and everybody seems silent now. The second service is always well past my bedtime, but I'm kind of wired from the service, so I go home and try to jimmy down a bit so I can go get a normal person. And this last Christmas Eve, I was sitting in front of my computer trying to jimmy down, and I was playing Free Cell, which I know all of you do too. And I have the Notre Dame station on it. They had glorious choral Christmas music on, and it was just thick and rich, and I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, can I get to sleep? Yeah, yeah, uh, go, go, God. And it switched the program. I think at midnight, or it might have been one o'clock, I don't know, a fellow came on with a thick and little pink Jamaican accent. Hello, he said, I am Dr. Africa, and we will have reggae tonight. I'm like, oh, well, reggae music, I, I, I like that. And so I left it on, and they did the most bizarre and wonderful translation of Christmas songs in reggae style. And I was sort of bouncing along and saying, yeah, God, oh God, can I get to sleep the other night? God, come on, where's the ace? Where's the ace? Listening to Dr. Atkinson, he has this wonderful different kind of joy, but he talked about how difficult Christmas is for many of us because of the past, because perhaps of what this last year has brought us or done to us. He talked about how his sister, his wife had just lost her sister. And he was terribly cheerful about it, which I thought his wife might resent a little bit. And he said, but it's okay, because she is with Jesus where she belongs. She is in heaven with Jesus, so we just got to give her to Jesus and let go and celebrate Jesus. And I thought, give her to Jesus. That's like saying, I want to take the pain and the struggle and lay it on the altar and walk away from it and say, it doesn't belong to me anymore. Let Jesus take care of it. Now, like the lamb struggling not to be born, we want to go back to the old and say, yeah, but I still worry and yeah, but I still mourn and yeah, and we want to take it off the altar and carry it with us a while longer, except if we're going to really start all over, we have to let go. This morning, immediately before first service, I was given a gift, a lot. This is a piece of semi-Christian kitsch. It says, repent body <coughs> guilt lifting action new formula now contains fire and brimstone salvation in a box enhances forgiveness repentance atonement and temptation well that's interesting it says how to use slip the appropriate amount into your tub depending on how much you've sinned recently if you use the entire box it says I broke nine of the ten big ones. <laughs> Three quarters of the box I stole from the collection plate. Half the box I only lost it in my heart. It says you can do this and it will cleanse your body and your soul. I like it. Repent by washing. <laughs> to start over. We need to repent and be washed clean and to accept new life in Christ. And when we say new life, that doesn't mean constantly going back to the old and taking it back. It doesn't mean reclaiming the burdens and saying, no, those are mine to bear. It doesn't mean hanging on to the sorrow and relishing the brokenness. It means bursting out of the cocoon, not knowing what's to in the Yorkshire days, the good news is those same little gray, wet lambs who came struggling out in the bleak midwinter 
you go by two or three months later on those farm roads, and you can see the hills covered with lambs and the sheep. And the little lambs with their whiter than their mother's wool are bouncing and dancing and frolicking and chasing and are just experiencing the sheer joy of being alive in a new spring and having a new life at them. And that's supposed to be us. Not hanging on to the dead poop, which will only kill our spirit. Not insisting, no, I want the warmth to be cared for when I felt secure and I knew that I would have all my needs met. But slipping free of the old. Relishing the wind of the spirit that blows us in what direction we don't know. And start all over. Not because God will condemn us otherwise but because God loves us so much. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the freedom of Christ of dancing and joy. Thank you for the pain and the harshness that forces us to grow. Thank you, God, for new beginnings and new life in you. We pray in thankfulness, knowing you didn't demand we follow rules or put harsh burdens upon us, but because you gave Jesus freedom. And Jesus of no choice endured the cross because you loved us and you want us to experience